Amen. Uh, if you would, go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2. <laughs> Matthew, chapter 2. And we'll, we will be starting at verse 10. Matthew chapter 2, verse 10. Picking up at the very end of the journey of the, the wise men. And this is what Matthew recorded in Matthew chapter 2, verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come to the house... They saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise. Take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet through the Lord, out of Egypt I have called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all male children who were born in Bethlehem and in all its, its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah lamentation, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, because they are no more." Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, and being warned by God in a dream... He turned aside into the region of Galilee, and he came and dwelt in the city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. And Father, I pray that as we look over the story of Christmas, as we maybe even look at our own hearts and minds reflected back at your love. God, that you would speak to us, Father. That you would tell us what we are to do, Lord, with the love that you've given us. And Father, I pray that you'd move my flesh aside, let the very Spirit of Jesus minister to every heart and mind here. God, that we may know that God was with us. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Uh, this is a part of the Christmas story that is not often looked at. I, I think for, for obvious reasons, there is some great hardship that happens after the birth of Jesus and after the wise men show up, uh, proclaiming that a king has been born. And this is not something that we typically see, even maybe even a Christmas play, even touch on. Uh, but what is very important is that it did happen. It is in Scripture, and it fulfills prophecy and it gives an end to the birth narrative of Jesus. And what it does reveal is that, one, the birth of Christ did not just affect Israel, but it affect nations. And we see this because we have some wise men far from where? The East. Amen. How many of you have heard the Christmas story? Amen. Any of you? Any of you here, right? They're far from where? The East. Amen. And so they came bearing what? Gifts. Amen. What are they? Frankincense, right? Amen. There we go. We're all caught up now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So this, number one, teaches us that his birth affected the nations. His birth also revealed something. 
evil and sin. Amen. A great light has been born into the world, and that light reveals darkness and makes the darkness what? Flee. And we see after his birth, the evil and the sin that's in the heart of one man called Herod and his desire towards Jesus. But then, very importantly, and I want to spend a good bit talking about this guy, is Joseph. You see, Matthew reveals the heart, the character, and the actions of a man of God, and that is Joseph. And if we're very honest, our country, our world, is in desperate need of men of God. Men like Joseph. And these scriptures, that they're so beautifully uh, written. It was as if God gave them to us. Amen. Praise God. And it reveals to us the heart of Joseph and what kind of man he was. But there's a, a lot of, a very interesting thing that happens here too. There's a word that appears throughout this entire chapter and in chapter 1, and that is the word dream. You see, it, it's so interesting. You know, when, when God appeared before Mary, he sent his angel, right? And, and it wasn't a dream. Mary saw the angel and talked to him, but he never sent an angel physically to, to Joseph. He, he talked to Joseph through what? A dream. This is so interesting. And so in the entire New Testament, in the entire New Testament, this particular Greek word is only seen eight times in the entire New Testament. And it appears five times, right, just in a Matthew 1 and 2. Isn't that interesting? The last time it appears is in Matthew 27, when Pilate's wife had a dream. And she dreamed that this man, Jesus, that they should have nothing to do with him. And she, matter of fact, sends a message to Pilate and says, Pilate, I had a terrible dream about this Jesus, and that you should have nothing to do with him. Isn't it quite amazing that God chose to speak to his people through dreams in the Bible? You see, I believe that God still speaks to us through dreams. I believe that God desperately wants to speak to us every day. But I wonder how often we're listening to him. Or if we've placed ourselves in a position to hear him in the first place. So I want to tell you three great truths, okay? Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. ready. Here are three great truths. Number one, God wants a relationship with you. Can you say relationship? relationship. He wants a relationship with you. Number two, God wishes to transform us into his love. Can you say transform? And very importantly, number three, God wishes for us to bring his love to others. Amen. Can you say others? Y'all are good. Y'all are awesome. Did y'all catch that? Relationship, transform, others. Isn't that interesting? I love this scripture here. Let's check out Joseph for a second here. Most of us know the scripture of Joseph. Turn a little ways back to chapter 1 here. Let's see what kind of man Joseph was. Chapter 1, look at verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ follows as this. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a what? Just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, he minded to put her away secretly, but while he thought about these things secretly, an angel came to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of what? The Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his peoples from their sins. So all was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. 
Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name what? Jesus. Listen, there's five huge things we learn about Joseph straight away. Number one, he was a what kind of a man? A just man. He was not just a good man, a just man. Number two, he was kind and not judgmental. How do we know this? Because after Mary came to him, and, or maybe he just noticed, right? We're not exactly sure how that conversation transpired. I mean, just, hey, got any guys in the house, amen? Men. Any ladies? They got us. They got us. All right, men, just put yourself in Joseph's shoes. You're betrothed to get married. You're engaged. And your fiancé comes to you and is like, uh, I'm with child and it's of God. And you look at her and say, well, God can raise that baby. <laughs> right? God can pay for its bills. Right? Right? But this wasn't that case, though. He looked at her, and instead of being judgmental, instead of her, uh, taking her out before all of the town and saying, this woman has sinned against me in Israel and should be stoned and killed. Instead of doing all that and being dramatic, he just looked at her, and I'm sure because he loved her and he loved God more, said, okay, well, that's it then. And then he went, and he went to sleep. Because I don't know how many of you guys, when you're depressed or upset, I eat a lot and then I sleep. Amen? Any of y'all, can you relate? You know, you're going through a hard time, you go to Bojangles and get a, a tailgate special for your, yourself, right? <laughs> Just for you and that gallon of sweet tea. And you sit there and say, I feel better. No, I don't. I'm going to bed. And you wake up and you're like, I don't feel any better. And you cry out to God because, listen, normally... If we're very honest with ourselves, that's the last thing we do. We'll turn to so many other things before we cry out to God and say, God, speak to me. I need you. I'm sure Joseph went to bed very troubled. And God came to him in a what? A dream. And he spoke deep truths to Joseph. And very importantly, he wasn't just a just man. He wasn't just a kind man. But he was in a position to hear God and understand his will. Men of God, we need this in our lives. Women, y'all need this in your lives. A man who loves God and who hears God. And then he's a man of action. He immediately, what? He does it. Amen. And I love what it says at the very end. Look at verse 25 again. And he did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son. You know what that means? Joseph was a patient man. He was kind. He did not insist upon his own way. I think our children desperately need dads like this. I do. I had a friend who went to South Africa on a missions trip. And uh, as he was getting to meet the people, the, their day of worship was just amazing. They asked him to meet there an hour early before worship. And when he arrived there, he didn't know what they were doing, but they were praying. You see, the pastors and ministers there, they pray for an entire hour before the service even begins. And, and right when he got to the, the area in which the church was happening, they didn't have a building. They, they were out in the woods. And as he's drawing near to the place, he could hear singing. And all their children and, and all the women were outside singing to God. And the entire time this is going on, the men are praying inside. And what they're wanting is to experience God move. You see, when he arrived, he was going to be the guest speaker. And so right when he got in there and everybody was just uh, shaking hands with him and, and loving on him and, and singing around him, he was already immediately overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit. And so right when he got in the room and he got around all these other men who were praying, the Holy Spirit was moving so uh, heavy that he had trouble breathing even. And then he set in his heart and his mind, God, 
You want me to preach to these people when they can out pray me and out worship me and out sing me and, and out experience you than me? I, I don't even know why I'm here now. And then he heard God say, you're here because I told you to be here. When he got up to preach, he said, I, I am speechless. Because in my pride, I guess I, I didn't know I would experience God like this here. You know, God's moving all over. He is. Because he wants a relationship with you. He wants one so desperately. There are people in other countries that can't experience the message of the gospel. It's forbidden there. And this particular uh, guy that my friend met while he's in South Africa, he was from a, a Muslim family. And as, one evening after they did their prayers, he went to bed. Uh, his name was Yosef. Yosef had a dream. And in Yosef's dream, he dreamed of a man standing in front of him, calling his name, Yosef, Yosef, Yosef. Come worship me. Come serve me. And he said in his dream, who are you? And he says, I am the Lord Jesus. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. So Yosef, when he right, wakes up from his dream, he goes into the living room and, with his dad and his mom. And he says, like, Dad, I've had a dream and I heard Jesus call to me. He wants me to worship him. You know, I remember when I went to my dad and said, Dad, I feel called in the ministry. And he says, are you sure about that? But he gave me some great advice, and he was happy for me. You see, Yosef's dad jumped up and went for the gun to kill his son. And the only reason Yosef got out of the house is because his mother stood between him and his father. And he ran. For three days, he sat in the woods, praying to somebody he didn't know yet, but he knew that he was called, and he didn't know exactly who he was and, and, and what his role was. He just knew that Jesus had called him. And he's sitting in those woods, and he's like, well, now what, Jesus? And he's afraid to flag anybody down because they might know his family. Right now, he was on a list that he was going to be honor killed. And finally, when he was short on food, uh, short on resources, he finally flagged down somebody and was just praying. He's like, Lord, I don't know who this is. But he got in the car, and he sat down, and they began to have a conversation. He goes, where do you want to go? He goes, just away. <laughs> just away. And he said, well, I want to ask you a question. Do you know Jesus Christ? Have you heard of him? And Yosef said, I dreamed of this Jesus. And this man took him to a church. And they got him out of the country. And now he's serving in South Africa with a church. Isn't that amazing? You see, where us missionaries can't go, God can God still speaks to us in dreams. Except we don't place ourselves at a position to hear him. You see, church, Joseph was in a relationship with God. When God spoke, he heard him. We look at the scriptures. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 8, Blessed are those who are pure of heart, for they will what? They will see God. Paul wrote in Titus 1, 15, To the pure... All things are pure. But to the corrupt and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Their very minds and consciousnesses are corrupted. I think that we place a lot of things in our heart and our minds that take away from God's word, take away from our, our relationship with him. Matter of fact, some of us might even feel like our relationship has static and we can't exactly hear God. It's because we're not hungry and thirsting after God's word. As it says, Jeremiah said in 15, 16, he says, your words were found and I ate them. I love it. Listen, we are consumers, Christians. We're, I disappeared. <laughs> we, uh, we are consumers. We love to consume. I, I just mentioned the tailgate special and you guys went crazy. Jeremiah said, your words were found, and I what? Ate them. And your words became to me a joy and a delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord, of God of hosts. 
Jesus, while he's teaching one time, someone yelled out, Blessed is the woman who bore you, Jesus. And Jesus looked at her and said in Luke eleven twenty eight, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Jesus said in John 5, 25, Very truly, I tell you, the hour is coming and now is here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Do you hear God's voice? John 8, 47 says, Whoever is from God hears the words of God. The reason that you do not hear them is that you are not from God. Ouch. I was talking to a young lady and she just said, Pastor, I... I've, I've just never heard God. I don't feel like I've ever felt him. I, I just don't know. I've grown up in church all my life. I just don't feel like I have a connection to him. And said, well, let's go to scripture. And so we're looking at scripture. And as we're talking in the discussion, she begins to say, well, that's so weird that you say that because so-and-so just a while ago said that. Or uh, actually, when I was scrolling through Facebook, I read exactly what you were saying. And during the conversation, she just said a few other things like that. And I said, so wait a minute, are you telling me that as I'm telling you all these things, you said you've already heard it from other places? And she says, yeah. I said, it sounds like God's talking to you. And it was like I physically struck her. You see, God is speaking to you, and you have no idea sometimes. He's just trying to get your attention. Some say, I just wish if God would speak to me audibly, I would believe him. No, you wouldn't. You would rationalize it. Listen, miracles doesn't save anybody. Jesus, I mean, God did wonders in Egypt, and the people, when they got freedom... They immediately rebelled against him. Miracles doesn't save anybody. You see, transformation does. And the only way that you can be transformed by God's word is if you let God's word in your heart. You see, God wants a relationship with you, and that relationship, he wants to transform you and change you. I do believe once I may have heard God audibly. It's a very strange story, but uh, I used to run lights for a Christian rock band Back when I was about uh, 16 or 17, I would run lights for him, and I'd have to put these big rigs up. And uh, well, some of y'all know, my friend uh, Scott Cadell, he went to Turkey for a few years as a missionary. Well, then he was in the band, and I was getting this rigging up, and as I was messing with some chords, I heard Ka uh, Scott call me. And so I moved, and I was like, yeah, dude. And this huge rigging fell right where I was. I mean, it's like, bam. And I was mad, because like, oh, I just put that up there. It didn't dawn on me, it's like, oh, that would have uh, killed me. When you're young, you're bulletproof, and you live forever. And then I assessed that, and I said, uh, Scott, and he wasn't anywhere around. I yelled for him, and I was like, Scott, you know, and, and he, he showed up, and he's like, well, what's the matter? He goes, I almost died, but you called me, and, and I moved right in time. And he said, I was at the other side of the field, man, I, I, I didn't, it wasn't me. I don't know. Have you ever heard your, your name being called, but you don't know who did it? Have you ever been in a moment where it was just absolutely going to be very bad for you, and somehow, some way, you got through it? Have you ever been in a moment where you're just so low and depressed, and all of a sudden you feel like something embracing you or hugging you or carrying you through when you can't carry yourself anymore? Listen, God desires a relationship with you. He reaches out to you because he wants to transform you. And he wants to transform you not just for you, so that you would bring that love to others. Because listen, relationships transform you Relationships transform others. But you got to ask yourself, what kind of relationships am I in? Because there are some relationships that are cancerous to your faith. And they deteriorate your faith from the inside out. That is why Paul said that it is better for us to be equally what? Yoked. Amen. I look at this passage here. When Joseph said goodbye to the wise men, and they left, right? And they went and reported the who? Herod, right? And Herod said, uh, oh, excuse me, they didn't go yet. You know why? Because they had a what? 
a dream. Amen. And then Joseph, he didn't stay where he was, did he? Because he had what? He had a dream, and he left, and they were saved. Then he went, went to Egypt, because that's what the scripture said must take place. He had another what? Dream, and then he returned. But right before he got there, he realized that another bad guy was there. This is so interesting to me. How many of y'all have ever had a baby? Anybody here? Anybody ever have a baby? Any late? Amen. You had to be there, didn't you? You had to be there. Right? Because you were carrying that baby. Do you know who didn't have to be there? Joseph. Sometimes the dads aren't there. Joseph didn't have to be there. Joseph could have looked at Mary and said, no. Joseph could have heard this dream and said, it might have just been that chicken tetrazzini I had the night before, right? I don't, that was just a dream. And he could have turned her away still. You see, Joseph didn't have to be there at all. Joseph chose love. Joseph, Joseph chose to be a dad to this son. Joseph chose to protect them. Joseph chose to do everything he possibly could to make sure that this young child in which God said would be the savior of the world to grow up in a healthy home. Joseph chose that. And there are a lot of us who choose poorly. A fella, right after he got off work, he went to the golf club. That's what he did every day after work. He got there, hung out with his buddies, had a few drinks, and went home. He'd get home, he'd say to his kids right before they went to bed, and then he'd go to bed, and you wake up and you do the whole thing over again. And that's what he did. One particular afternoon, he stayed a little longer at the place, hanging out with his friends, and a lady caught his eye. She came over, and they started talking, and she put uh, her hand on his arm, and then something inside of it said, run. And he did. He got home, a little scared, did his normal nightly thing. It was December. His little girl sat in his lap, and he said, well, baby, what do you want for Christmas this year? I want you to stay home on Christmas. That's just a story, but that story is more true in many homes than anywhere else. There are families who need a Joseph. Amen. Our schools need some Josephs. Amen. Our communities need Josephs. We see men, you got to be at the right place at the right, what? At the right time. But here's something very important. You also have to be the right person. You could be at the right place at the right time, but you might be the wrong person. You see, the only way to be a right person is let God in your life transform you so you can go and transform this world. Amen. Would you please stand as we go to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you for the testimony of Joseph because he is and was a man of God. And Lord, we need that more than anything right now. Father, I pray that as we go to this time of invitation, Lord, that you would lead and direct us, and God, that we would place ourselves in a position that we would hear you speak to us, and then that we would do exactly what you say. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.